Good evening. Good evening and welcome dear participants. We have we have with us Ms. Dona Barreto and uh, she is going to take this practical session ahead. I request Ms. Aditi Shah to introduce the speaker for the day. Ms. Aditi Shah. Good evening, everyone. My warm welcome to the speaker of the day, Mrs. Donna Barreto, and all the educators who have gathered from different parts of India and different corners of the world. Your participation ignites and motivates us to push for better planning. And what binds us is the passion, a common passion to be effective teachers, educators, and research scholars who constantly try to upgrade themselves as an English teacher. The moreover, and moreover, it is a great it is great to have a fraternity of teachers in India and abroad who are always ready to collaborate and share the ideas, experiences, knowledge, and best expertise to help build this community of practice. Mrs. Donna Barreto has been an educator for the last 27 years. She has started her career with in Joseph's school at Agripara. She has done her majors in history and BA through the University of Mumbai. Teaching has always been her passion. She is also pursuing the post-graduation in geography. She has collaborated on various events and has managed and handled various projects efficiently. She possesses great leadership qualities and has efficiently coordinated multiple events at her school, some of which are the science exhibition, Republic Day Parade, and the Naval Band performance, as well as the Armed Force exhibition and a number of ed educational trips with the students. She believes in the all-round development of students and hence does not miss a chance to accompany students on various educational trips and trips which would help them develop and grow. She has taken students on geography and history field trips, organized trips for students to explore and experience the world outside their school. She likes to keep updating herself and keep learning new skills that help her to become a better person. She has learned a number of apps which she conceptualized the need for online teaching. Self learn to how uh, to use Google Earth, PowerPoint, and make videos to teach the students. She has enrolled for almost every webinar conducted by various organizations, equipped herself, and then she has also helped teachers on a small scale by starting a campaign entitled Walking Together. This has led to a webinar for more than 350 professors organized by SGV and SSP Arts, Commerce, and Science College in Palgar. So without wasting much time, let's invite Mrs. Donna Barreto for, to begin with today's session. Today's workshop is on enhancing teaching skills interactive PowerPoint presentation. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Presently, I'm teaching at St. George's Convent, Bandra. Okay. So you can begin, ma'am. Good evening, everyone, and I'm happy to be here to teach you interactive PowerPoint presentation. So let us look at the first part of it. That's a little video on an interactive PowerPoint presentation. So I've taken this pyramid from our standard 10 textbook. And normally when we do it in school, we watch our children filling in and you know completing their work. But now that we are online, it's a little difficult. So we can make our lessons interactive by getting answers from children and filling it while we are explaining the concept to them. So the first one that we have is an article. So we fill in with a, a preposition at the past tense of lie, lay, 
you can see I'm typing in the answer. And so you can go on. You can also use a, an interactive PowerPoint in the following way. You have some questions and you want to get the answers from your students. You ask them the question, we have made progress and they give you an answer. Assertive. Is assertive. Is the word so poor? What kind of a sentence? And they give you an answer. Interrogative. And you can have voice, you're not audible. The next you can teach them a definition or some concept and then ask them for the answer. You can get an immediate answer from them by filling environment and so on. You want to teach them the world map. You've taught them the continents and the oceans. And you want to check how much they have learned. You can do this. And the student gives the answer. You can type in your answers. You want to teach them a particular diagram. You explain it to them. You can do it the same. Second answer, the third answer. Here you have an image with a number of parts that have been given. And you can do the same thing in a different way, where you can capture the attention of your students. So this is just an image and you want to explain each part so that your students concentrate on just that one part that you are explaining. So you open up and explain everything about the head. You can close it and you can open the next one and teach them about the and when you want to teach your students the map, what you can do is they just click, Ladakh, Himachal Pradesh, Uttaranchal, Haryana, Punjab, Jammu Kashmir, Chandigarh, Delhi. If you're doing the whole map, you may have too many things. So what you can do is uh, too many names. So you can just close some of these as soon as you finish. Then you can go to the rest and teach the rest. Normally, when we do something with the children, something like tongue twisters, we would put up all the four tongue twisters together and then make them safe. But there's something different that we can do. Since it's a tongue twister, we can twist the tongue. That's how we do it. You click on one and it takes you to a particular page on which you have this one tongue twister. Let the children say it. Once you finish, it's done. You can go back. Select the next one. And you can ask them to say the next tongue twister. I hope you're all saying the tongue twister as you're reading it. Next one. Click on the next one. That's your next tongue twister. 
I'll just put in four. And once that's done, let's move ahead. You can use the same method to create a quiz. You have your first question. Identify the monument. Your answer. Right answer. Give them the scope. If it's the blue house that is answered correctly, give them 10 points. Click. Question number two. Identify the singer. You get your answer. Give them the correct answer. Scores. Yes. Correct answer, 10 points. Question number three, identify the organ. They give the answer, click on the correct answer, go to the score. If they've given the wrong answer, minus five. Go back. Next, identify the predator. You get your answer, go to your scores, put in your so You can keep creating more questions and prepare a complete quiz. So you don't have to go to any other site for a quiz. You can do it simply through an interactive PowerPoint presentation. You can use this as an anagram. Ask the students to prepare Another word using all the letters. And you can do it in this manner. The most important thing for most teachers is a blackboard or a whiteboard. So design the blackboard. If you look down your left hand side, you have a pen. You can use that pen to write. I can write something that I want to write. But it's a little difficult to write. We're used to writing using the chalk. But it's difficult to write the computer. So you also have a laser pointer here that you can use. We can use our PowerPoint screen to type what we want. So the same thing that I'm doing, I want to teach my students now. Types of nouns. You can type and you can prepare a list of the nouns that you have. A ball, abstract, and so on. So you can create. Now you also have a highlighter, a laser pointer, and a highlighter. You can use your highlighter to highlight a particular text. Uh, let us now learn how to do it. So those who want to can go, uh, you know, you can use your laptop if you have and you can directly do a hands-on. Ma'am, you're not audible. Ma'am, now? Yes. Okay. Ma'am, uh, ma uh, can you explain a little bit about the, the video? Because they were not able to hear. hear. Okay, uh, we are doing the same thing. We are learning that. Okay, so let us do a hands-on directly. Uh, that is a video just to show you what you can do through an interactive PowerPoint. So I think we can use, uh, you know, do a hands-on and uh, learn how it is done. Okay, so the first part of it that I did was 
simply if you see my screen, you can see my screen, right? Ma'am, is my screen visible? No, ma'am. Your uh, share screen is stopped. We can see you, your screen. Okay, but we can't see the share screen. One second, I'll share my screen. Okay, let's do a hands-on quickly by learning how it is done, okay? Uh, I think now my screen is visible. Yes. Okay, so now uh, if you take, uh, you can look at this uh, panel. Can we have slideshow? Uh, Ma'am, when I'm teaching, if I put it on slideshow, then they won't be able to learn. Okay. So I'll have to keep it at this because uh, they'll have to learn how it's done. Okay, so the first thing that you do is you have prepared your slideshow. So you, what you can do is to make it a little more interactive. The first one that you saw was, you know, the movement that took place. That is simply a morphed effect. So what I've done is on the first slide, I've created this. And on the second slide, I've created something different. I've just put a globe here and I put a smiley here. So I've just changed the effect a little bit. Now, if I want to do something with this, uh, where I show movement, I can go to transitions. Okay, then you go to morph in transitions and you click on morph. And then when you go to a morph, you will get the effect. So then if I go to my first slide and since I've used the morph, if morph it effect, this is what I will get. Okay, so it has moved from one to the other. So this is the effect that you will get there. Then the next thing that I did is again, I used a morph effect for the anagram. I have typed in both the words. You can see I have two slides. I'm using the same font size. And then what I do is again, I go to transitions. I click on morph. And again, I'm morphing the same thing. Now here, what you want to, you have to do is, you have effects option. So when you go to the effects option, you, you have three options. You can either click on objects, you can click on words, or you can click on characters. So what you need to do is you need to click on characters. So once I click on characters and I go to this option, when I go to slideshow, This is what will happen. It's simply just a morph effect. It's not difficult at all. Okay. The next thing that we are going to do is we are going to learn how to make this uh, pyramid interactive, how we can type on the screen. Okay. Now here for this, you have to do something. You go to file and you go down here where you have options. You click on these options and you have customized ribbon. So in the customized ribbon, if you go a little lower down, you slide down, you have recording and you have developer. Normally these are not checked when you, you know, start using PowerPoint. So you click on developer if you want to add this uh, interactive way of teaching. And if you want to record, then you click on recording. And that's what I've done. I've clicked on both. So I say, okay, and I go to this part of it. Now, this is simply an image that I've, copy pasted from the text, okay? Now, once I've used this, I click on, go to my ribbon and I now you can see that recording and developer has been added to this ribbon of mine. So I click on developer and here I have a text box option. So I click on this text box that is there. Okay, and This text box option and then I click on okay, I select on the text box and then I click it here. 
Once I have done that, I have to now go to properties. And in properties, I will go to the font. You have font here. You click on font and you select the font and the size that you want. Okay, once you've selected the particular font that you want, the size that you want, you say okay. And you close this option. And now you know that when you type here, you, that is the font size and that is the font that will be available and that you can use. Now all you need to do is to fill in your other boxes. Control D will give you a copy of it. Okay, it makes a duplicate. So you just place it wherever you want. So all I'm doing is I'm pressing Control and D. So this is what I'm doing. I click on this Control D. I get something here. Again, I'm control D so I can move this box. So all I'm doing is I'm control, I'm just using only control and okay, so you keep using control D, it will give you an additional box and you place it wherever you have to place it. I'm doing the same thing again. I've got another box here, so I place it here. Once I fill in all, some I've just left like that. I've filled in all automatically, it will show me. Now I go to slideshow and if I'm going to the current slide and I want to fill in an answer like I did, okay? Uh, now I want my second answer is at, so I'm getting that answer typed in. So I can type in my answers while I'm presenting online. So while I'm teaching my students, I can just type in all the answers and I can go on with it. I'm going a little fast because we need to finish quite a lot and Vana is too little to complete all. So in the same way, you can complete this whole pyramid by typing in whatever is wanted. Uh, in a similar way, you can use this next slide that is there, okay? In the next slide, again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to developer. I'm going to the text box in developer and I am creating this box here. Again, I'm doing a control D, so I get a duplicate copy. Control D, D is for a duplicate. So you can, you know, control D and get a duplicate copy. You can place it in the right uh, way that you want. You can, to just make it uniform, you can enlarge it a little so that it looks uniform. Okay, and now when I go same way to the slideshow, I can, I can use a design or anything that I want. But at present, I'm not concentrating on that. I'm just concentrating on an interactive way of doing it. So if I want to type in my answer here, I am going to put my answer. Next one, I'm going to put. And so on. You can keep putting in your answers in that manner. Okay, so that's the one way that you can, uh, you know, you can do it. Now, there's now something else that I showed on the video that is you can give them a definition or an explanation that you want to give them. And uh, maybe you want a recap of the same. So what you do is you take the same thing and you can create blanks there. So developer, again, text box, you're doing the same thing. You put in a text box here, okay? You again control D if you want to give another, supposing you want to cover up this part of it and you resize it according to what you want to cover. Okay, same thing if you do this, now you click on your slideshow, current slide, you can type in your answers when the children give you your answers. Okay, so you can keep put filling in your answers. So this is one way of making it interactive, like a fill in the blanks or something where the children will, you know, answer and the teacher types in. The next thing that we saw is the world map. So you're teaching them the map or you're teaching them any concept you need to, you know, first teach them. And then you want to uh, know how much they have learned. So what you do is you take another slide the same thing. You use the developer here. You use the text box for the developer, you put it here. Now here there's something because these are on two separate lines. 
you click on properties and you have something called true and false here that is multi line if you see you have multi line here and you have a true and false so for the multi line you click through then it will help you type on two lines okay so then again you do the same thing control d control d you can just use control d place it on various things so that you are just covering up the options that are there and you can use it in various places okay now same thing you go to slide show if you check your current slide wherever you have used control d you can type in your answer okay if it is too uh, big it will go to the next line because you use that true and false option so you can fill in your answers in all your boxes as and when your children give you the answers okay uh when you are doing something in science or some diagram that you are doing you have a digestive system and you have so many things that you know children have learned now you want to ask them for the answer even for the unit test or you know for a recap that we have you do the similar thing you put in your text box from the developer a normal text box does not allow you to type so you have to use the text box from the developer which is up here in your ribbon and then you can whatever you uh, if you want to make more copies you can just click on control d if you don't want you backspace it you don't get you know supposing i want to put in uh, another text box here i select and i do a control d i want to put a text box here or i want to put it i can use this text box putting it anyway if i don't want it backspace and it will move out so this is what you can do with the help of a developer so just a text box that will help you write and get your answers now there's something different that we can do this is one of the uh, you know the other options that we have for example here you have too many things given to children and you know it uh, if you are teaching them the cornea they might be reading all the other things that have been given on this diagram so what you can simply do is create something like this okay now here what you do is you go to home you take a small circle or an oval that you have here you can use any shape of your choice okay i'm just using a circle an oval here and i am going to maybe just draw a small one here okay now i have drawn a small circle here i will enlarge it a little so you can see it a little bit i have drawn one circle here now i need to uh, camouflage this circle so if i want to camouflage and you give a number because it's easier when you give it a number so give it a number and you right click on it and you say format shape okay when you go to format shape it will give you fill when it gives you fill option you can just click on transparent and you can see that this has now become transparent okay the color will change a little bit and it will become transparent so you can resize it make it a little smaller if you want okay then what you need to do is you need to insert a text box for your answer so i am going to insert one text box here and you can give it a color if you want or you can just keep it plain blank the choice is yours what you want to do you want to give it a particular color you can give it a color okay you can do something like this now we need to animate this text box so what i am going to do is i am going to animations and i am going to use wipe option which i think is very common with all teachers i think would know how to use a simple powerpoint okay so this is what i've done now i am going to 
click on my animation pane and when i click on my animation pane uh, right hand side you can see that my animation pane has opened and i have clicked the rectangle now i will put click on the drop down arrow i will click on timing then i will go to trigger okay and i will say start effect on the click off now i don't want it on the click of the picture but i want it on the click of oval one so i will say okay once i do this i know that when if i play here you will see that it's opening when i click on one now if i don't want this after it's you know after i finished explaining i want to close it again so i'm clicking on this again and i go to add effect whenever you have given one effect to an object the next time what you do is you go to add effect okay so i'm adding animation effect now i want it to exit so i am going to say wipe you can give it the direction in which you want it to move from left to right and then this one i am going to drag below my triggered option now if i go to my slide show this is what it will look like okay you can't see anything there but you can see the number 1 and when i move on to number 1 you can see my pointer has now changed to a hand option look at this option then i click on it it will open whatever i have written would appear if i write something and i can close it again okay i'm doing it once again so that you follow so what we first did is you go to home from home you select anything oval rectangle whatever you want a star or maybe an arrow whatever you want to i am just selecting an oval and maybe i'm taking the second object that is here and i'm drawing a little oval on this and i'm giving it the number 2 i'm giving it a number because when i trigger it's easier for me to remember okay now if you want you can directly change it to the black or you want to change it to a particular color then you right click format shape and then you make it transparent click on transparent that will give it the normal color that the object behind has okay then i go to my animation pane before that i need to a text box so what i do is i create a text box here my second text box now i need to animate my text box so i go to animations again i give it the wipe option i want it opening from right so i've given it that option now i need to trigger so i select this okay and you can see the rectangle that is on the top right hand side so i click on this and i go to timing okay remember it is timing then i go to trigger start effect on the click off now i don't want it on the first picture so i select what i want it to trigger with so not oval 1 but oval 2 so that's the number that i've given so i click on okay now i know that my trigger has happened you can see here there's a small little ad, trigger arrow that uh, that is shown here there's a little trigger icon that you can see here now i wanted this object to move back in when i finish i've already animated it once so i need to add animation so i'm going to click on add animation and i want it to exit so i go to exit and i say wipe okay now it can't be up it has to follow so it comes down so you drag it down below now i go to my slide show and i can check again now if i'm not sure which one i've done i simply move my cursor and you can see my hand the pointer has changed to a hand icon and i click on it it opens when i click on it it will close okay so that is how you can use this option so this is the second option that you have now let's go on to the third option 
okay normally when we present this is the way we would you know present and if i go to a slide show i've given lots of animations here but this is the way i would normally in the past present okay i would click on one then i would have one name coming up and then click on the second arrow okay and so on so each one would be animated in such a way but then it takes very long and you know it will take that much of time for me to animate the whole thing and to get it like this then it's a clutter and i don't want it to look like that i want it to look nice and neat so that my students can follow so what i do is i click on this object okay this is the map that i've already inserted and kept now here what i need to do is i need to go to home and in the same options that you have the drawing option you have a free form shape there is a shape that is called free form okay you click on that free form shape and you select a particular area there is no need of selecting it exactly you just select a particular area but it has to show you that it has formed a different shape see now this here you can see the blue shape here so it has formed a different shape okay now i don't want the shape to be seen but i still want to know which one it is so i've given it a number i have right clicked and i have gone to format shape after i say format shape i make it transparent okay so i click now if you see this has become transparent okay now i go to my animation pane again before that my text box because i want to put in some no name. no zone okay and i keep on this now the animation that i want i can click on that i go to animations and in my animation pane i get a wipe i want it opening up from right from the left or from the right whatever i want i can select that okay then i go to drop down the same thing that you did for the previous one only for this you are using the free form tool then you go to your timing you go to trigger you go to start with effect on click on now which one is it we've given it a number 1 again so it's the last thing that i have done okay so i say okay now i want to go back in then again i will click on this and i will say uh, add animation and put it in again okay move it in as i had done earlier if i don't do that i just leave it at this from current slide okay i go to the arrow and click it will open up now it will not close back in because i haven't given it the add animation of exit okay the exit option hasn't been given so it will remain at that so now if i want to you know get it out again i add animation and say exit add animation i am giving it the exit effect again wipe i want it to move in from right to left so i've given it that animation i drag this down below now if you notice on this there is a number and there's also a shape so what i can do is i can take off that shape and i can take off the number that is there okay i can do both the things i go to home and you have shape outline here drop down you say no outline then there will be no outline that is visible here again where the number is i delete the number if i don't want the number so now you can see that you can't even make out that i've done something to this so now when i go to slide show all my students can see is a blank map now when i go and i move my hand you can see if when i move my cursor it changes to a and i click on it it opens and when when i finish explaining i can just click on it and close it so this is another way of doing something very interactive okay now coming to a quiz okay this is how you would prepare a quiz uh i just put in a few uh slides already so you prepare your text box you put the word quiz you prepare another take a text box and prepare supposing you want it for various subjects okay so you can just do a control g control d you will get more okay supposing you want four 
So you will get a, something of the same size. So you can just fix it in the four different places and you move it to these places. Now it's all saying the same subject, but you want to give it a different name. So instead of English, if I don't want it in English, I will change it to maybe it's history. And uh, try to use caps lock so that you know it's visible to everyone. So I'm just changing the effect here. I will put it on caps lock and I'm putting history. I can change the names here simply by clicking and changing the names. Um, supposing I want to call it mixed bag. Again, it's mixed bag. Okay, and whichever subject I want to, if I want to change this to say, I want to change it to science. I change it to science. Now I want to connect this one that is English to a question that is pertaining English. So supposing I want to name the writer poet. So I go to my previous page. I click on this English. I go to insert. I go to action. I click on hyperlink, action, remember, insert, action, hyperlink. Okay, now I'm going to hyperlink it with, there is a drop down here, and I will always select slide. Now, which slide do I want to select it with? So I want it connected with the writer and the poet. It will show you here. Then I say, okay, if I want, I can give it some sound, so I can click on sound. And I say, okay. So now when I go to slideshow, it will open English, uh, the, you know, the topic that is connected with English. I do the same thing, go to history. I go to action. I go to hyperlink, drop down arrow, slide. I select on the slide that I want. So if it's history, I want maybe identify the palace. And I say, okay, I can give it again some sound effect that I want. I want, I have a mixed bag here. So I've clicked on mixed bag. It's in insert, action, hyperlink. Okay, now I go to drop down. I go to slide. I find out which one, scientific instrument. It's a mixed bag. So I want to say a musical instrument is the mixed bag. Say OK and say OK. I click on science. Again, action. Hyperlink. Slide. And I hyperlink the slide that is connected with science. OK. Scientific instrument. Say OK and say OK. Now when I go to slideshow, and I play from the current slide. If my student, they want to select, or, you know, maybe somebody wants to answer history. See, my cursor has now changed to a hand. Look at this change effect. That means I've done something to it. So when I click on history, it will go to the history question. Okay, then I animate this as you normally animate, give your answer and so on, and you can go to the next one. So you can connect in that way. Now here, I have only connected it from here to a particular slide. Now I want to go back from the slide to my main page. So if I take the first one, I will insert one particular, maybe a picture or a drawing or a shape or whatever you want to. Okay, I prefer inserting a picture because then, you know, uh, sometimes students feel it's better and it's, so I'll take a smiley, I'll insert a smiley here, and I'll put the smiley down here. Now I have to hyperlink this smiley. So I'm going to insert. I am going to hyperlink this smiley. So I'm going to action. I'm going to hyperlink this. 
Now I want to hyperlink it to my scoreboard. So I click on the drop down. I click on slide. I search for my scoreboard. Okay, so my slide 22 shows me scoreboard here. I say okay. And then I say okay. Now when I go to slideshow from current slide, I have hyperlinked this. So when I click on this correct answer, it will take me to my scoreboard. Okay, now near this scoreboard option, whether you have a house or you have group or you have ABCD, whatever, you have to put your text box from the developer. Okay, so here there's something that you need to do is you need to put a text box. So I go to developer because I will be typing in my marks while I am doing something with them. So while I'm on screen. So I've used my developer and I can type here. Now there's something else that you need to do since once I come to the scoreboard, I need to go back to my question page. So I read scoreboard. Now I have to get back to my question page. Now for that again, I need to insert some, you can insert a shape, you can insert an icon, you can insert whatever you want. Okay, and supposing you insert, um, if I go to a fly, click on this and I say insert. I got an object here. I get this object down here. Now I'm hyperlinking this object insert action hyperlink okay now what do i want to hyperlink it to not my previous slide i will customize this to the slide that i want which is the quiz page so i say okay and here again i say okay now when i go to slideshow let me show you i'm doing just one with you because we don't have time actually this takes a lot of time so if I go to English, I'm getting this. When the children give me the answer, you can use your animation to cover this answer up and you know click it when the children answer. You go to this, you click on this smiley, you read the scoreboard, the children have given the correct answer, you put in your marks. Now you want to get back to your quiz questions. You click on this and you'll get back to that page. So you go to the next one and do the same thing. So you'll have to hyperlink each one. The only good part is once you've done this, you just copy it. Okay, so you can copy it and paste it on your next slide. So this animation effect remains. So all you need to do is do this and paste it on your next slide. So each one can be animated and you can paste it on your next slide. So in this way, you can create your quiz. So now if I go to the second one, supposing I click on, I go to my slideshow. And from current slide, I go to mixed bag. Okay, name the musical instrument, you get the answer, you click on this, you get go to your scoreboard, you type in your answers in the scoreboard, go back to your main screen. So you can keep moving back and forth in that manner. Okay, uh, the next thing that we have is a blank screen that can be used as a blackboard. So all I've done is I've gone to home, I've inserted a box. Okay, so you just select a box and you insert the box in, give it a particular color. You want a green board, you can keep it green. You want a white board, you can put it, keep it white. If you want a blackboard, you can change the color to black. So you can, you know, just change the color. And now when you go to slideshow, you can use the pen option that is there. Okay, down here below, you have the option of a pen or highlighter and the laser pointer. You can use whatever you want and you use the pen, you can write. Now, the next one that I've used is I've used the developer again on the screen. All I've done is I've clicked on developer, I've selected text box, I have inserted this text box here and another text box. If you want, you can insert just one text box. Okay, and then when you share screen, 
automatically this slide show from current slide you can type in whatever you want okay supposing whatever you are doing and then you put you can use it for your sentences and whatever you want to explain to your children so i hope you followed with uh, you know followed this interactive powerpoint presentation uh, the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to just give me a second i will we'll go to google earth and i will show you how you can use google earth you can use google earth for various powerpoint presentations and it's really helpful it's really good okay i have gone to google earth now i go back you can prepare presentations through google earth so for history geography whatever you want to learn or uh, you are to teach your children you can prepare a presentation now if you look at look at these three dots on top it's the main menu that you have and you i have prepared one project already so i will just click on that to just show you what exactly okay a location of india and brazil i have put in various features here and i can use these various features to teach my students okay so what i am going to do is i am going to present so the first one i have is that i have told the children that there are seven continents and so i'm taking them to each continent that is there so i go to north america and you can see down here you have table of contents and then you have your you know arrow to move so you go to the next one south america Okay, so as you move, you can just keep moving to each one. You go to Africa, you go to Europe, you can go to Asia. As you click the, you will see that the image it's moving. Okay, so you can see the moving image, and I think children love something like this. So you go to the next one. You will reach Australia and Antarctica. So you are actually taking them to this location. so they feel happy when they do that okay when they can see something that's different now i want to tell them about the equator i want to tell them how you can you know the world can be uh, divided as for northern hemisphere southern hemisphere and i want to explain about it i want to tell them something about the prime meridian i can go to that okay so i tell them how you can have the eastern hemisphere and the western hemisphere and explain further so i can keep explaining things to the children as and as i want okay so supposing i'm telling them about asia and tell them this is the continent of asia india lies in the continent of asia it lies in the southern part of the continent of asia and so you can so that, now you can if you go to this plus arrow you can move it a little more and as you keep moving it you will notice that you can see more you know you can see the neighbors you can see the various states that are there inside you can teach them about the tropic of cancer you can do everything that you want okay the latitudes and the longitudes can be taught to them and so you can move ahead so this whole lesson i've prepared with uh, a powerpoint then in the ra point i take them actually to the the location there and they can see indira point then from there i move i need to explain about the indian flag you can give them your explanation whatever you want to tell them then you can we talk about spices okay how india is famous for spices the famous port of india then i want to give them the historical background i can tell them about the historical background of india and move ahead now i want to show them brazil this is the first lesson or the second lesson that we had so this is something that can be done first one is field study so this is the second lesson so here you can show them brazil the location extent i put in all the details here so you can directly put in your details here then you can go to the next part of it 
talking about Brazil famous for coffee and it is it's called the coffee pot of the world. So I put in an image here, I put the flag there. You can add an image from the from Google, okay? You can use any image, either the ones that you've saved or you can use it directly from Google search. So you can tell them about the famous samba dance. You can tell them about the sport, okay? Football, soccer that they play and you can go ahead and tell them about the historical background of Brazil. So you can do everything. So I have 19 slides here. It shows you 19 slides and I can keep informing them uh, or telling them about everything there. Now, besides that, there are other things that you can do. Now for this, the simplest way to do it is you click on new feature. Okay, you can add a place. You can click on full screen slide or you can add a place. Now, if you go to a search option, supposing you are doing something in, you know, history or you're doing something, you want to show them the, say, I want to go to Egypt. I want to show them the pyramids of Egypt history, maybe tourism, you're doing something with tourism. So you just click on this and it will show you which one. Supposing I go to the first one, it's taking me right there, okay? Now, if you see here, there's an option. If I click on this option, it's taking me into the that particular area. And I have all the details given down here. I want to go to the Sphinx. I will click on that. It will take me to the now I can zoom in here and I can get a better view of this thing. So I can, what I can do is I can double click here. I can go here or I can click on this arrow. Here you have all the details given to you. Okay, then you can click on this arrow. You can go to that particular place. Now, if you want to add this to your particular project, you can see here there is add to project. You can add it to your project and it will be saved in your project. So you keep moving and you can put in whatever you want. There's another thing that I like here is Voyager. You click on the Voyager and it takes you to various options. You also have a number of games that you can play. So if I click on games, it gives me various options. You just scroll down and you have various quiz options, animals, you have lakes, you have museums, you have the national parks, you have many things here. You can just click on any one of the games and play it live with the children. Okay, so you can just click on any one that you want. So you have all these options down here. So you can take any one that you want and you can click on it. Supposing you want to click on the animal world. Okay, it will take me to the animal world, the quiz on animal world. So I say, let's go. So you have question one, you can ask your children to answer, okay, the weight of, I think some of you can type in if you know the answers. The weight of the African elephant when it is born. Okay. I really don't know, but I can just click on an option. Supposing I'm clicking on, say, 200. Uh, I can see the chat box. Okay, no, no answers. But supposing I say 200 pounds, it will give me. It's the right answer. And it gives me a little explanation also here. 1,000. 1000. Da da Danica, ma'am, is saying 1,000. 200 pounds, ma'am, it's the right answer because see, so, you're then it's 200 pounds. Okay, so maybe we'll, yeah, we can learn it first before we, you know, tell it to our children. So, yeah, yeah, do, it, yeah do it with our children. And then you go to next option. You click on next, it'll take you to the next question. And it actually takes you to the location. And you know, that's nice with, with children. What kind of dog is most popular choice or for a sledge dog? Okay, so see. Sled dog, I don't know, maybe a husky. Okay, it's Alaskan husky, so it'll give you the right answer. It will tell you why it is, that's the answer. So you keep going to next and you can keep, you know, getting in your answers and you can actually see the earth moving. You, so the children can also watch this. So it's fun for them. So once in a while, whichever subject you are doing, just do a quiz with them. 
go to google or do a quiz with them and they really enjoy this so you have a lot of uh, you know options here so you can click on that and you give your answers so you can create it in this manner so you have options here you can you have your projects here so i have created two projects here the third one is blank it's just i just started it for today but you can have location you can have now supposing you want uh, to find say the himalayan mountains okay you're teaching them the geography you click on that so you don't have to do anything you just click and you wait it will take you there so it will actually show you the option there okay so you can see it you can enlarge it you can you know you want to enlarge something you can enlarge it you want to go back you reduce the size you want them to go right there you can click on that it will take you to that location it will show you the location and you can really help students because they find it very interesting when you are doing something like this so you can click on this go to that place you have various pictures that you know they have put up so you can just click on this arrow at the side and it shows you various images and there's also an explanation given for every image that is there so this is all you need to do you need to go to this and click on it and it gives you all the options till it comes back to the first one okay so these are the images that you can see of the himalayan mountains and a little bit of the the area or the place and so on so you get everything around here you don't want you move out of it again you've gone back to it okay so in that way i think you can do a number of things uh i don't think we have time for anything more so it is simple click on these three dots okay you go to projects click on projects go to a new project and create a project in google drive you click that then you click on your new feature and you add a place you add a title you add your place and you keep saving your project in fact it gets auto saved as soon as you open it you it gets auto saved so if you want to do something in say um you know you want to do something in history it's not only geography that you can do you can do any subject so you want to do history you do history and in history you want to do a uh, tourist say tourism then you add a description here which are the places you want okay you want egypt you want what whichever place or you want uh, only india you type out your description here and then it gets saved to your project and every time you want to add something you say new feature the second feature will get added to it okay so you keep typing and then you can add a place mark wherever you want so you just click on add a place mark search for your place that you want now supposing you've taken the himalayan mountains and actually there's someone in the waiting room and i cannot see my screen so yeah it's it's going back to that so you just there is a little uh, option here you can add it to your uh, project that you want okay so you can keep adding everything that you want to your project so in this way i think you can learn how to do these two things uh now something else that i want to show you is i will stop sharing this screen i think we've done quite a lot of this so give me a second i will show you how to record the screen i use a very simple method there are a number of methods that or number of apps that you can use but i find one app very easy and very simple to record and to edit okay i will
uh, you must have heard of you know uh, screen castify i find that's the easiest one i will share my screen i you can i go to google once you download screen castify it shows you here on this uh, you know address bar that you have just near that so this is how i record most of my uh, videos that are there you can see my youtube channel you just click on your desktop if you want a desktop you click on desktop if you want to put on your camera you can also put your camera on so depends on what you want and you say record now when you say record you have your entire screen or your application window so you click on your application window and supposing you double click on this application window and i say share now it will count 3 and then it starts okay so then i say slide show and i click from beginning and my uh, screen is now being recorded okay so i say whatever i want to say i am teaching uh, someone how to use google meet so i'm telling them how to use the new meeting how to set the time for their meeting how to create google classroom and how you can see google meet now if you have a g suite account and so on okay once i've done that i finished with this i stop i can close this and you can see now uh, can you see my screen yes ma'am you can see my screen right so you can see that it has recorded you can see this it has recorded now supposing your this is i like this because you can edit directly you don't have to go to any other app so i if i don't want all this and i just want to start from somewhere so i just click on and i go to the region that i want the path that i want i click on okay so i want to start from my full screen so i go to this okay and it records everything whatever i don't want i can just delete what is not required if the last thing that i wanted was this i can delete what i do not want okay so i can edit it directly i can open the editor and edit it directly so i am going to Okay so I this is what I've done so I say create I want to trim I trim it I'm it is now trimming my video and the best part of this is you can directly share it to classroom or youtube so if you look at it in the right hand side you can say publish to youtube share it to classroom you have a download option you can download it you can export it as mp4 you can download it or you can export the audio only whatever you want to do so you can say export as mp4 the minute you click on export as MP mp4 it will come down to you will see it exporting once it is done you download it as your you know m uh, your video and you save it then you can use it wherever you want you can directly share it if you want the options are given there there are many more options given there to you you can send it as email you can publish it on youtube or you can share it with classroom so that is one way of recording another way of recording is if you have a vlc i think all of you have used a vlc player okay so if you have used a vlc player you can directly download from a vlc player i'll just show you that
I think most teachers have already used VLC player. So you click on VLC player, you click on the media option and you go to open capture device. When you go to the first option, you have media and down below you have open capture device. Now you want to capture your desktop. So you click on, you have a drop down arrow here in capture media, you go to desktop, okay? Once you've done that, you can increase this frame rate that you have. I normally keep it seven. And here it says play. You don't go to play, you go to the drop down. You say convert. Okay, in convert, it will ask you what kind of file you want to convert it to. Now, if you want it a little high, high end and you know you want it clear, then you can use this 1080 option. I normally use that TV video 1080p. So that's what I have selected. Then you browse, you select a folder where you want to save it. You can see I've saved so many of these. Okay, so I can just say, new video and I say, save. Okay, now I will say, start. When I say start, supposing I'm going to Google Meet again, yeah, I'm opening my PowerPoint. It has already started recording. So I go to my slideshow. I'm again going to my Google Meet and I'm clicking. I'm just clicking quickly so that, you know, we finish off. Escape. Now I have this file here. I can close this and my VLC player will show me that it is still recording. I pause. I go to media and I can open the file and you will see that it is saved. The new video has saved here. And I can now open the new video and play the new video. Okay, so that's an easy way of doing it. Okay, I think with that I will stop. I think we've like gone beyond time. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions? Participants all have any questions because I could not couldn't see any questions. Everyone was very everyone was uh, saying that it was very informative and wonderful session. Participants, you have any questions? You can raise your hands. Uh, Ma'am, I have a question. Yes, please uh, introduce you yourself. So uh, my name, yes, Shobha. My name is Shobha. I work in JSS private school. I just wanted to check upon the name of the video recorder that you use for screen recording. I just missed that name. Uh, screen Castify. Okay. Screen, sorry, ma'am. Castify. Castify. C-A-S-T-I-F-I. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am. VLC also. I think all of us are used to VLC, so you can use VLC. And VLC. Uh, Microsoft 10, then you click on photos and there you can edit your video. Acha. Small videos and put them all together. So, okay, okay, great, ma'am. Thank you so much for that. That's all. So Any other question? Participants? Any questions? Great hands-on training. That's from uh, Nadim, sir. Thank you. For getting a talk from him, that means you are really good at uh, practical session. You. I really wanted to do this because I said teachers help teachers. And, you know, I... So I feel there are no questions. Aneha Mishra, yes? Neha? So she has raised her hand. You can unmute yourself now. Yes, Neha. Miss Neha, you can unmute yourself. Hmm. Neha, you don't want to ask any questions? 
अरे आता तो दिला ना मैम आई हैड अनदर क्वेश्चन अबाउट द ब्लैक बोर्ड एक्चुअली आई डिन क्वाइट गेट दैट मैम कैन यू हियर मी यस इफ यू कैन जस्ट शो द ब्लैक बोर्ड मैम बिकॉज़ दैट वाज वेरी यूजफुल यू जस्ट टेक अ ब्लैंक स्क्रीन ओके यस यू टेक अ बॉक्स Uh, okay. A rectangle, whatever, no. According to the shape that you want, okay. Okay. Rectangle that you have, so you drag it and you uh, change the color. Okay. And yeah. once you change the color, you can use your pen, you know, to write, or you can use simply use a normal uh, screen also, white screen. You can use ah. it as a green screen. And okay. And if you type anything, then you use the developer text. Ouch. Okay. Text box. Okay. But remember, okay. if you want to use it in multiple lines, that multi-line has to be selected as true from the properties. Multi-line is true. Okay. Yes, true. Okay. That's one thing you have to keep in mind. Okay, sure. Type only one line and won't move ahead. Ah, okay, okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Miss Vana Mala. Uh, yes, madam. Uh, I really like today's session. I enjoy it very much. But I have just one query. I miss that point. That how can we put score in interactive PowerPoint quiz? I think you can use the developer because only when you use the developer, you can type something. So you put a developer text box there, and when you go to screen or to I mean share screen, it will type there. Okay, but for each student, how can we give scores? this you do normally when you are doing a group thing no if you are doing it for each student then you use an excel sheet okay thank you ma'am then put it in an excel sheet okay thank you yeah hello ma'am yes ha ma'am yes, i am manjushan ha ha i am manjushan andeshwar okay i want to know one trick that uh, have you watched doubtnut uh, videos doubtnut videos the videos are like uh, writing on the white board having the lines horizontal lines so i want to know the trick how to write like them how to prepare the videos like uh, writing writing videos that we will have to check and do because that's another app there are another app. there's another app called uh, smart draw okay It's smart smart draw, draw. it's very useful for especially for maths teachers because you can directly write all your maths sums on it so you can use smart draw uh, you can use the scale there and you know you can draw your diagrams etc so you can use smart draw uh, actually ma'am what happened uh, when i use zoom meeting for my uh, students uh, that time when i used white board so uh, it is not look the, the writing on the white board Uh, on the smartphone is not looking good and when i was that doubtnut uh, videos there are uh, very good handwriting uh, is there so that's why i am searching of the trick of that if you use a tablet you will have a good handwriting you can try it with a tablet if you have a tablet and a pen then you would get your you know handwriting once you get used to it okay ma'am okay thank you ma'am Shobha Arun, ma'am. Yeah, hi. This is Shobna Arun. Uh, hello. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the session is very interesting. Uh, can you, in our institution we are following Microsoft Teams? Shobna, so ma'am, not audible. Yeah. In Shobna, our institution, can you hear now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. In our institution, we are following Microsoft Teams. instead of zoom we are uh, following in uh, microsoft teams yes. so can you guide us through microsoft teams we'll have to take another session for session that. on that uh, yeah, yeah yeah we'll uh, arrange for another session shobna ma'am so sure so sure much. i'll do that Don't use zoom we are, i mean i'm also using google meet so you know uh huh more or less similar but you have to have a session for each one yeah yeah shobna ma'am next week Sure. Sure. Thank you. Sir. <laughs> Thank you. You can check my YouTube channel. I put up whatever I do, so it's simply Donna Barreto. 
Okay, okay, sure. Munir, uh, sir. Uh, Renu, ma'am. Yes, sir, go ahead. Yeah, uh, for Microsoft Teams, you can follow Mike Tholfson. He creates two or five minute videos uh, and with all the ready updates. So I will type in the chat box his name. Mike Tholfson, you can search on YouTube and you can find his channel. Shobna, ma'am, this is for you. Shobna, ma'am. Yeah, 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 ma'am. Tell me. Tell me, uh, ma'am. Sir, sir is going name, to type, yeah. The, the, name. the name I have given here in the chat box. Okay, okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pradeep. I, I also follow Mike Tholfson for all the Microsoft Teams tips. Oh, okay, okay. So, Muni, sir, any question? You raise your hand. Hello, everyone. First of all, uh, am I audible to you? Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. You are audible. Mm -hmm. Most of all, uh, the participants may be knowing me. It's my, I think, uh, fifth or sixth uh, webinar with uh, Mnet. Yes, so uh, I'm very thankful that uh, now I'm the part of this uh, organization and I'm just uh, coming with them. They are, they, they, this organization is wonderful. They are coming with wonderful mentors and wonderful speakers. Today was a really a fruitful session and uh, each and every session was fruitful. I'm very thankful to Renu, Renu ma'am who was always helpful. Thank you very much ma'am and uh, thank you very much uh, speaker ma'am as well. Okay, this is a thank you note. So I feel there are no more questions. So Dona ma'am, uh, it was really, really very interactive session. And uh, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, and uh, I request Aditi to give the vote of thanks. Ma'am, you want to say something before she gives a vote of thanks? You're thank you are so much. I have attended a lot of Mnet uh, webinars. And I think that's an inspiration and that's what made me, you know, learn more and uh, attend more. So wherever there are webinars, I attend so that I can learn something. <laughs> thank you, ma'am, for all that you are doing. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just tell Aditi to give the vote of thanks. Sure, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. On the behalf Aditi, of the Aditi, you're not audible. Aditi, you're not audible. I'm not audible. No. Yeah. Am I audible now? Yes. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. On behalf of members of MNET, I would like to thank Mrs. Donna Barreto for volunteering her time and providing us with such an informative and engaging presentation on the topic of enhancing teaching skills with the use of interactive PowerPoint presentation. The topic explained by her will definitely be of immense help for the teachers and will enable them to create interactive PowerPoint presentation for their students. The examples explained by her were extremely easy to understand and relevant for use of teachers. The demo provided by her on the use of Google Earth in classroom was extremely useful and very interesting. I would also want to appreciate the constant efforts of Mr. Nadeem Khan for providing the necessary technical support to MNET. Many thanks to the host and convener, Mrs. Renu Dhotre, for organizing the series of workshops through the platform of MNET. These workshops have enabled the teachers to stay updated with the latest methods and tools in varied areas of teaching which can be utilized by them in the classroom, as well as for online teaching purposes. I would like to extend our thanks to the participants from various countries for effectively participating in the various MNET workshops held till date, the spread of which has been increasing with every passing workshop. We at MNET appreciate the positive feedback obtained from all the participants and look forward to such enthusiasm from our participants in the future as well. Once again, a huge thanks to everyone and have a great evening. Thank you, Aditi ma'am. Thank you, Dona ma'am. And thank you, participants. On a Sunday also, you all have, uh, the Zoom room is full. So thank you. This is a love that you have, uh, you know, bestowing on Mnet. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nadim sir. He's always there, always. Whether it's rain, wind thank or you. anything. <laughs> thank you, sir.